book unboxing videos appear to be de rigueur for YouTube fine book collectors. Not wishing to be outdone, here I have an unboxing of about 14 private press books that I bought at a recent auction across six different lots. I hope that you enjoy the vicarious pleasure of watching this unboxing. Please let me know in the comments below if this is the sort of content you're interested in. First up we have The Phoenix from the Whittington Press um, by Brian Hanscom. This and the next book I actually bought together in a lot on a bit of a whim because they seem to be going quite cheap. But getting this out and inspecting it I'm really quite impressed. So the engravings are lovely. Um, as usual for the Whittington Press this is a very nicely put together book that feels great to handle. And this is one of the special editions meaning it comes with a separate portfolio of the engravings. The other book in the same lot is another one by Brian Hanscom, again from the Whittington Press. This is Cornwall. Um, it's very similar in construction to the previous book, so again very nice. I was initially quite suspicious of this so-called Japanese binding with the visible sewing on the side, um, but actually with the soft covers it feels really nice. And whereas the Phoenix had that paper portfolio with the engravings, this one again is the special edition and now the engravings are really in a proper hardbound folio. So again another really nice edition there. Now we have a third Whittington Press book. This is The English Scene by John O'Connor. Um, again, it's one of the special editions. This one is half bound in red leather and the leather feels really superb, lovely and soft. Um, and again, another very nicely put together book. This one was signed by John O'Connor, in fact, on his deathbed. Um, and I read that he wanted this to be a somewhat cheerful book didn't want it to have a macabre overtone, so he asked that as many of the engravings as possible be coloured in some way. And then here again we have a separate portfolio of prints and you can see one of these engravings that's been coloured um, to honour that wish from John O'Connor. Another nice book. Now onto books from the Golden Cockerel Press, starting here with Bly's Voyage on the Resource, which is part of a series of books that have this two-tone sailcloth style binding, all on nautical history, including several like this one about the mutiny on HMS Bounty. Um, we have the prospectus loosely inserted, and then we move on to wood engravings by Peter Barker Mill. Um, we saw some of these nice modern wood engravings in a voyage round the world with Captain James Cook, which I featured on this channel a month or two ago. And then log entries, which will be interesting to anybody who has an interest in this sort of nautical history.
One of the lots I bought contained four books illustrated by Clifford Webb. Um, this is the first of those, The Serpent's Presence from the Golden Cockerel Press. It has this two color binding that reminds me a bit of the Green Island, which I featured on the channel again a month or so ago. Um, and Webb illustrated several books for the press, all again with a fairly nice modern style that I like quite a lot. I should say that some of the lots I bought only listed some of the books that were included, so there were some surprises. And this is the first one. This is The White Llama by V.G. Calderon from the Golden Cockle Press, again illustrated by Clifford Webb. This is a book I've been after for some time, although it's the unlimited edition, so not very valuable, um, but still good to add it to my collection. And the third of the Clifford Webb illustrated books is actually some mass market children's book. So not very interesting, but at least my girlfriend likes the engravings. Now we have another stack of Golden Cockerel Press books. Again, this is a set of books mostly that were unseen and I recognise the first right away. This is La Bello Morphe from the Golden Cockerel Press. That's a little bit disappointing because this is one of the least valuable books that they published, um, but it's one I don't have, so good to add to the collection. The second is one I recognise right away because I own it already. This is In Defence of Woman. And um, this has really great wood engravings by John Petz. And the nice thing about this is that the other copy I own is the special edition. So now when I feature them on my channel, I can actually do a comparison of the two. Hopefully that will be fun. Here's another unseen book. I didn't recognize it right away, um, but this is Woman in Detail. Um, I don't really know anything about this book, but on closer inspection, it has some pretty nice um, illustrations, even if they're not the wood engravings for which Golden Cockerel is most well known. And then lastly here we have um, this book, The Pilgrim Fathers, and um, this is one I did know about. It has a really nice leather over canvas binding and a nice set of engravings again, so looking forward to that, especially since um, this history of early colonial America is something I'm definitely keen to learn a bit more about. Here I recognise the slightly ugly binding. This is the last of the Clifford Webb illustrated golden cockerels. Um, this is The Amazons by Ivor Bannett. Um, so one thing that's interesting about this book is that it's quite common for booksellers to write a few notes in their end papers. This one has a whole essay in there, also a book plate, which is a bit annoying. I don't like those very much. Um, but a nice large format and again more of those really great wood engravings from Clifford Webb. Next up is another unseen book and it's quite a small one, I have no idea what to expect. It turns out to be Brief Candles by Lawrence Binion. And I was initially quite disappointed because it's small, it didn't look that attractive. Um, it has more book plates, yuck. Um, but then on closer inspection, it seems to be a bit of a diamond in the rough. It has a really nice cloth of gold binding. It's one of only a hundred limited edition copies and it was actually quite a fun read. It just took an hour or two for me to look through that. Next is a book I recognize from the binding. This is The Lottery Ticket by VG Calderon here in its special edition. Um, this might be the shortest book in my collection at 12 pages, but I'm pretty excited because it has these wood engravings by Dorothea Braby, who also very effectively illustrated Mr. Chambers and Persephone in a similar style. 
Next up here is a book I don't immediately recognise. This is one of um, those unseen ones. Um, it turns out to be Gilgamesh, which is quite a nice surprise because, again, um, this is illustrated by Dorothea Braby with more nice wood engravings. Here we have the Golden Cockerel edition of Grimm's Other Tales. And this is quite a nice edition with great wood engravings by Gwenda Morgan. And I'm pretty pleased with this edition because many copies um, are in fairly poor condition, especially with a lot of fading to the spine. Um, but this one seems to be in really nice condition indeed. So pretty chuffed with that. Last up from the Golden Cockle Press, we have The Fables of Aesop. I knew this would have a book plate, but I still don't like it. And this is an earlier issue from the press, um, so it's nice to have something from that period. Um, and of course, this is a real classic, so it's great to have a nice edition of it. Lastly, I have something a little bit different. Here we have two posters that were both printed letterpress by the Whittington Press. One is to advertise the village show and another to advertise the press's own festival. And I thought these would make some nice fine book themed decor to go with the books that I have on display.